The Twelve Sons of Jacob, Part 2 Good day, friends. In the previous video, we told you about the first four sons of Jacob. Can you still remember who they are? The first was Reuben, the second Simeon, the third Levi, and the fourth Judah. And can you recall what the combined meanings of their names are? Yes, friends, it means to look and hear the law of Yahweh, to grasp it, and through obeying it we praise and serve Yahweh. Now let's look at the rest of the twelve sons. We find them in Genesis 30. Can you also remember what the word Genesis is in Hebrew and what it means? Yes, friends, it is Bereshith in Hebrew and it means in the beginning. Now Rachel couldn't conceive and she became jealous. But friends, we must not be jealous of each other. We must love one another as Yahweh commands us. And since Rachel couldn't bear children, she gave her slave Bilhah to Jacob as a wife. Oh my, now Jacob had three wives, and probably three mothers-in-law too. I feel sorry for poor old Jacob. Bilhah, on behalf of Rachel, then bore a son for Jacob, whom Rachel named Dan. Rachel said, Yahweh has vindicated me. He has listened to my plea and given me a son. So Dan means judge, or in other words, to be vindicated. And thus Rachel's prayers were answered, and Dan was born. Thus Dan was Jacob's fifth son. Bilhah became pregnant again and bore a second son for Jacob. Then Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And thus I shall name you Naphtali. Because Rachel competed with Leah to bear a son for Jacob, she wrestled with her, and finally, through her slave, she bore a son. And that's what Naphtali means, to wrestle. Since the slaves of that time were considered the property of their owners, Dan and Naphtali were regarded as Rachel's children, so Naphtali was Jacob's sixth son. When Leah saw that she had stopped bearing children, she took her slave Zilpah and gave her to Jacob as a wife. So Zilpah became Jacob's fourth wife, and through Zilpah Jacob was blessed with a seventh son named Gad. Then Leah said, A troop cometh, I shall name you Gad. Some Bibles say that Gad means fortune, or in other words, a treasure. So Gad was fortunate to be the treasure that Leah received, for she had now borne five sons for Jacob. Thus, Gad was Jacob's seventh son. Zilpah became pregnant again, and Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. Therefore your name will be Asher. Therefore Asher means happy and also blessed. So Asher was Jacob's eighth son. Leah was barren for a long time, and Yahweh showed her favor, listened to her, and she became pregnant, bearing Jacob her ninth son, whom she named Issachar. Yes, I remember Issachar, the best among all of Jacob's twelve sons because how I remember his name is that it sounds like a car. Haha, <laughs> you boys of today. When Issachar was born, Leah said, Yahweh has rewarded me because I have given my slave to my husband. So I will call you Issachar, as it holds the meaning he will bring a reward. Then Leah became pregnant again and bore a sixth son for Jacob, along with the two sons from Zilpah, making it a total of eight sons. Then Leah said, Yahweh has presented me with a precious gift. This time Jacob will treat me with honor because I have borne him six sons. So I will name you Zebulun. Therefore Zebulun means to dwell or dwelling. After Jacob's tenth son, Zebulun, Leah bore the only daughter among the sons and she named her Dinah. You probably mean the only thorn among the roses. That's your version, Lire. But look at what her name means. It means justice. Ha, because you girls always want to be right. Well, we are. For years, Rachel couldn't conceive on her own, and she prayed every day that Yahweh would open her womb and grant her a child. Though she was impatient, she waited and trusted in Yahweh without losing hope. And so Elohim thought of Rachel and listened to her. Yahweh opened her womb, and she became pregnant, bearing a son. Then she said, Yahweh hath taken away my reproach. Therefore I will call you Joseph, and I know Yahweh shall add to me another son. So when we look at Joseph's name, we see that he takes away our disgrace, our pain, our shame, that is, our sins, and then adds to us. So Joseph was Jacob's eleventh son. And just as Rachel asked for another son from Yahweh after Joseph's birth, 
Yahweh granted her request and blessed her with another son. We read about Rachel's birth in Genesis or Bereshith 35 from verse 16, but friends, it's a very sad story because just after she gave birth, she died. But before she died, the midwife told her that it was also a son. So Rachel realized that Yahweh had answered her prayers. Just as with Joseph's birth, where she asked for Yahweh to add another son, Yahweh fulfilled it, and so Rachel died. But before Rachel died, she said, You are son of my sorrow, and I will call you Benoni. But Jacob had another name in mind for this beautiful boy and said, You are the son of my right hand. I shall call you Benjamin. Now, Benjamin, in total, Yahweh has blessed me with twelve sons, and all of you will be known as the twelve sons of the house of Israel, because Yahweh has changed my name from Jacob to Israel. So friends, let's quickly look at the twelve sons of Jacob. The first is Reuben, the second Simeon, third Levi, fourth Judah, fifth Dan, sixth Naphtali, seventh Gad, eighth Asher, ninth Issachar, tenth Zebulun, eleventh Joseph, and twelve Benjamin. Don't forget justice. After Zebulun comes Dinah, then Joseph and Benjamin. That gives us 13 children of Jacob. Yes, technically it's 13, but we commonly hear of only the 12 tribes of the house of Israel, not 13 tribes. Yes, Lire, but technically Joseph's tribe was divided into two, namely Ephraim and Manasseh, so that makes it 13. Interesting, but unfortunately we have to stop here, and in the next video, We'll look at the meanings of the names of the 12 tribes of the house of Israel and put them together to see what Yahweh wants to show us with the names of Jacob's children. Stay connected with Postbox Ministries for part 3 and more captivating videos. Shalom. Postbox Ministries take great joy in creating video content that delves into the profound truths of Yahweh's Word. These productions are not only time-consuming but also entail significant expenses to bring to fruition. If you have found value in our content, we humbly request your assistance in covering the cost through a small donation. Your support holds immense importance to us and every contribution, no matter the size, is deeply appreciated. Thank you for being part of our journey and helping us spread the message of faith and wisdom. Together, we can continue to make a positive impact and inspire many. May your kindness and generosity be blessed abundantly.